And hi everyone, welcome to Life Edge, because life just does not have to be mediocre. I am joined today by our co-host, good friend, Susan Nash. Dr. Susan Nash. How are you, Susan? Good. I'm really glad to be here. Good. Well, you've got a different backdrop today. Your lighting is just stunning. You look great. You, you look marvelous, my dear. Well, thank you. Don't jinx it. No jinx it. Don't <laughs> jinx it. Here we go. And we're back. Well, today we've got a great guest, uh, somebody you know who's in the Houston area and um, who's originally from Brazil. So that's real interesting, too. Would you like to do the honor, Susan? Happy to do so. Thrilled to introduce Boralio Perdigal. And he's very interested in video, in e learning. So, Boralio, how did you get started and how did you get interested in using video in e learning? Hello guys, thank you for having me today. Um, yes, uh, my, my experience goes back to um, working in a project for uh, a large operator in a, a big project here in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, I was in charge of project communications. Uh, in that role, I was going out on the field, capturing project history, uh, going to vendors, talking to leadership and capturing all that information. Um, and creating clips, creating a film documentary, uh, and really seeing firsthand what oil and gas really is, gaining, gaining an appreciation and passion for oil and gas. Uh, I also could see how capturing that project history uh, helped communication throughout the project, uh, and that kind of sparked an interest in doing more, uh, exposing the oil and gas to a larger audience, um, and, and little by little, uh, I, I kind of uh, put that idea into, into what Petrol Lessons is today. Um, so that's, that's in a nutshell, that's how, how the idea got started. Well, I have a question for you. Okay, so I've done lots and lots of little video clips, and I put them on YouTube, and <laughs> most of them are like a, just a dismal quality. But I like the idea that they're out in the wild and they're spontaneous. But, but unfortunately, like, there's wind noise and some of the things. And, and I, I, I was just wondering, like, what have you found to be the most effective and the most I ideal? Yeah, I, I've, I've done uh, a lot of research and found uh, a lot of tools out there that are not too expensive. They don't need to be professional quality. But uh, it, it enhances the video, enhances the audio. You know, some, sometimes you can buy a little lavalier for $30. It's 10 times better than, than having just a mic from the computer. Uh, and, and that enhances the audio, which is a big pet peeve for, for folks uh, uh, listening to, to a class that might be an hour long if they don't have great audio. Then uh, the cameras are getting much more affordable. You can get a great camera, you know, for 300 bucks, 500 bucks. So it, people are becoming more used to technology. It's becoming more affordable. So more and more people are, you know, being able to really turn around great quality content, video and audio, uh, without much effort. Well, the thing that I found to be really interesting is that, like, the ideal length of, at least for, like, little snippets, it's like under two minutes, two or two and a half minutes, three minutes or less for at least communicating a concept and then not droning on for 15 or 20 minutes on the same topic. And that is, that is very true. There's a lot of research backing that up uh, with all the, the movement of the MOOCs. Uh, there are thousands of data points showing that retention is, is best under three minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I do give guidelines to instructors that post their courses on Petrol Lessons. Well, first of all, Petrol Lessons, the course might be an hour long, but it's broken down into bite-sized uh, lectures. And the guideline for those lectures is to be around three minutes. Sometimes you just can't because you the topic goes longer, but uh, that's a sweet spot, three minutes. Now, for those who don't know, what is Petrol Lessons? Mm -hmm. So Petrol Lessons is the first knowledge marketplace for the oil and gas industry. Uh, we allow any oil and gas professional or any, any uh, company that has 
content that's relevant to the oil and gas industry to publish their courses on the platform and sell them. So we are bringing in content from all over the world, from uh, individual contributors, those are oil and gas professionals, retired folks, uh, consultants, uh, as well as training centers, associations. So you name it, we are kind of converging all of those uh, those courses into Petro Lessons to make it a one-stop shop for oil and gas content online. Well, I'm thinking AEPG has an American Association of Petroleum Geologists. We have uh, about 65 one-hour e-symposia webinar type things. And they're, they're, okay. they're good. I mean, the quality is good. It's variable. I mean, what, how, it depends on what you're interested in. But we have some that are pretty interesting. And so I'm really excited to try out like six or seven of them on petrol lessons, especially if we can like chop it up a bit and, you know, like fit the guidelines instead of just being an hour sitting there. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's exactly what we are trying to do. Um, there, are, you, you just never know who needs that type of content, right? Uh, and being in Houston and you guys, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and, and the major oil spots, uh, we are kind of spoiled, uh, having great training uh, from different training centers. But think about all those people around the world uh, involved in oil and gas that might not have access to the to, you know, to different training. So being this one place where all this training material can meet and, and people can find kind of by on-demand knowledge, it's, it's really great. Well, and the thing that I find to be really interesting too is like today the price of oil dropped again and people are having these terrible, terrible issues you know, financially and lots of layoffs and you think that this would be a time to like retrench and not do anything. But actually, I think that what you're doing is a really good idea because using a downturn to like build capacity and help people get training in an affordable way, and also like a lot of the people who are like um, potentially potentially retiring can contribute. That is right. See uh, what happened back in the '80s and all the way to the beginning of 2000 uh, and the oil crisis. Uh, it you know there was a gap in hiring and that caused the what we call today the big crew change right the the skills gap that's much talked about uh there was a freeze in hiring and the knowledge transfer so now there's about 20 year gap uh in, in knowledge and it's about to happen again during this this current crisis um the first thing that's cut out of the budget is training then you have all this uh, mid and senior level professionals being uh, laid off or giving early packages to retire so all this knowledge is leaving the industry we want to uh, i know attract those folks hey come to petrol lessons download your knowledge here uh let's share it with the world it's it's a big mission it's very ambitious uh but i, I really think we're contributing not only to uh, the industry and to those folks um that they're leaving the industry but to the world uh you know being, being making that knowledge of accessible outside of the silos uh it's 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 very important no, Bradley, that's a good point because in the utilities industry as well, in power, gas, they're all losing experienced people as well. And I think you're right. It's about a 15 to 20-something year gap between all those retiring and all the people coming on. It, it, are you, would you say this is a worldwide phenomenon or is it something more endemic to the U.S.? No, it's a worldwide that phenomenon worldwide. and it, and it, it uh, plays out in other industries as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm focusing on oil and gas because that's where the idea came from, from my experience there. But uh, other industries are experiencing that as well. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, they talk about, well, like Rick, you talked about utilities. Mm -hmm. and, and I was wondering exactly what have you seen utilities companies do? Uh, same thing. They've they've had the problem of people retiring. Some of them are coming back as consultants and training and doing things like that. Others don't want to come back. They're enjoying their re their retirements, but they there's literally a 15 to 25 year gap between those retired, let's say linemen, who understand how it all works, and the new people coming in with no experience. And it takes a while to to build good laborers in those areas who understand not only their work aspects but the safety aspects the uh the safety is crucial in those areas um 
and and the workflow, how it flows from one thing, you know, from the power plants to the actual lines to to the switches to to everything else. Automation has taken some of that over, but you still need qualified people to run the automation. So that's that's what we've seen in that industry. Well, I see that in geology too. I, I think what happens is the, the colleges have have taught some petroleum geology. But they kind of count on on industry to give them a specific knowledge. Well, then, so industry people, the industry hires people from from colleges, and then there's nobody to like train them in house. It's kind of a problem. I think the the whole idea that people are becoming more uh, comfortable with technology and and with uh, less afraid of capturing themselves. I think this movement to video. Uh, and, and to capture knowledge, uh, it, it's really a game changer uh, because you can actually capture some of that experience. Uh, I was talking to a guy who's uh, preparing a course for a refinery, you know, for downstream, and uh, we were discussing the content of the course, and uh, he wants to put uh, some experience in there, like when he hears a certain noise, that means you know that something's about to happen so those things that you can only get with experience well you're able to translate that into video uh, better than you would you know writing a manual or a paper so and, and more and more I want to make sure that we capture experience it's not only textbook material on the videos I want to make sure I, I'm able to uh, get some experience from the folks that are sharing their knowledge it's a lot cheaper too than having to um do a lot of simulations and, and and you can change it you can edit it more easily I think I mean that's my impression yep uh, that that's right I mean it, it the the cost varies depending on how how big the production is uh, you know again the data points from thousands of courses from Coursera and and, and other uh, MOOCs out there shows that it doesn't require uh, you know, uh, high the highest end studio and equipment to to turn a course and and make it uh, you know create a retention, create a following. Uh, and my point is that let's let's uh, share that knowledge, uh, whatever it takes. So that's great, and I think especially in science, I think sometimes being um, trying to use too many animations in science, it it makes it super expensive, and if you can use some basic basic images and then use the video like in different ways I mean for example you're talking about videotaping but are, are there other ways that you capture video besides just having a person talk yeah uh, you know PowerPoint even has a feature that many people don't know that you can record your voice um, and, and all of a sudden you can have an mp4 file out of it so it, it, or videotaping your you know using your iPhones or um, iPad there are iPad apps that you can you know write on the iPad and record that writing and turn it into an mp4 file so there there's several things that can be done today it's, it's just become so accessible it's just a perfect timing to you know to create something that like this and opening up education in fact I we agree. have a little video that you sent us do you want to shall we show it now great yes here's a, here's a YouTube video did you know that there's a huge skills gap affecting the oil and gas industry worldwide it's true the average age of employee is 40 with one-third retiring over the next five years and plenty new arrivals to fill the demand they need training and guidance if only there was an easy way to earn money by teaching my oil and gas skills. Well, now there is. Introducing PetroLessons.com, an innovative online training platform for buying and selling oil and gas knowledge. PetroLessons allows those experienced in oil and gas to share their knowledge and experience with the world and get paid for it. When someone buys your course, you get paid. There's no limit on how much an instructor can make. Instructors set their own pricing for their courses, and because it's available 24-7 anywhere, anytime, they can literally earn money while they sleep. To get started, go to PetroLessons.com, click the Become an Instructor tab, and fill out the form. Next, plan out your course, film your lectures, publish, and get paid. It's that simple. 
With over 600,000 new jobs being created by 2020, there's plenty of demand for online training in the oil and gas industry. Make sure those new arrivals are studying your content. Got oil and gas knowledge? Sell it on Petrolessons.com. And we're back. That was good. All right. Yeah, that, that video was created to, you know, uh, shout out to, you know, those those folks with knowledge out there, with experience in oil and gas to, uh, you know, sign up, share your knowledge uh, there. You know, we're making it where it's rewarding for those that share the knowledge. Not only it's it's money coming in because they get 70 percent of uh, of the revenue, net revenues from their course. But they build a reputation, they are sharing the knowledge, they can, you know, indirectly sell their services and products. So it's it's a win-win, I think. You know, I, I've been doing a lot of different e-learning types of things over the years, and I've, I've seen different things come and go where people have been tried, they've tried to become brokers, sometimes of mentoring, sometimes of, of tutoring. And then I remember back in, um, oh, Second Life, people would try to go on their islands and have, have courses, virtual courses. And, and so they didn't really work. And, and I don't know really why some of the brokers or the clearing houses didn't work, but I suspect it's because they were too broad and they didn't try to focus. And I was just wondering, you know, how do you plan to get over some of the challenges? Yeah, I think by being uh, in, in a niche, right, we are in oil and gas and oil and gas only, we are able to do a lot of things that, uh, you know, the, the platforms that are playing in, in a big, uh, you know, with different industries are not able to do. Um, I think the aggregated value here by going to one platform by oil and gas professionals, for oil and gas professionals, to an industry as complex as oil and gas is, um, and as international as it is, in, in a crisis right now where the name of the game is efficiency, is cutting costs. So it's kind of like the, the stars are aligned here to where, you know, we, it's the right timing. Technology has evolved and changed the way we live, changed the way we work. Um, so and we, are, we are bringing all of that modern way of learning to the platform. Uh, and, and there's so many bells and whistles uh, in the plans, uh, and I think I think we're able to take advantage of a lot of, of factors here uh, now. Well, here's what I think could be key to your success. First, you're making it easy, and you're not making everybody do all this Camtasia stuff that they feel uncomfortable about. So you're able to attract people that you can maybe turn into stars, <laughs> and you can turn mm -hmm. them into people that, that really have a following, and they can do more than one, they can do several on maybe the same topic if they're like small chunks, like hour a piece or something. Yep, I love that, yep. And, and the, other, the other thing that I didn't mention is that, uh, so we have this global offering, right, the petrolessons.com, and then companies will be able to have their own private label instance of the portal. So let's say company.petrolessons.com. On that, uh, po those private label portals, they are able to uh, bring in content from the global platform as well as create internal knowledge. So now they, they are capturing internal knowledge, project intelligence, lessons learned, and distributed uh, internally. So this is really a, a game changer for, for how that's done today. Um, a, lot of lo a lot of knowledge is lost within companies and all the money and, and time spent on onboarding and uh, then when you onboard, the person leaves. Uh, it, it's, it's crazy. Now I have a separate question, totally off topic, but I'm looking at your screen and behind you, I think that's a camera? That is a camera, well, yes. Which one is it? <laughs> Is a Sony RX10. It is the RX10. I, I just got the RX10 Mark II. Love it. Oh yeah. Those are correct. I'm looking at. Go. That looks familiar, but I couldn't quite make it out. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's an RX10 with a teleprompter. Uh, I built this studio here. To I'm doing everything I can to help people download their knowledge, and part of that 
uh, is creating studio here in Houston, nice. uh, where you know professionals that have no uh, no resources to to film themselves. I'll bring them here. Let's film it. I have somebody that does the editing, and then I'm partnering with other media companies or cameramen and in different places around the world to to help um, you know professionals and anybody that wants to share their knowledge to do it. That's great. And you know what I like about that, too, just kind of getting off a little bit topic, but everything's on topic, sort of, is that people think they have to spend absolute fortunes to do good work. You don't. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a that's a $1,300 camera, but it's a great camera. Um, and everybody's buying these Cinema D cameras, you know, five, ten thousand. You go, why? It's going on YouTube later. It's going to get crushed in quality anyway. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that makes sense. No, I like your setup over there. It's really clean. Okay, so I have a question. Yeah, it, you, oh, go ahead. No, it, it is not an expensive setup. I have a few lights. I have uh, the camera and teleprompter. I have some nice mics. But, uh, you know, I think all in all, I spent less than maybe $2,000. Oh, that's great. Uh, and that's because the camera alone was 1000 But you can do nice cameras for 500 bucks or less. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. how do you use the teleprompter? It, it, and have you used it yet? In, in, and how does it change? Yes. It's great. Uh, it's, uh, you can control it with the uh, iPhone. It's an app. So it's, a, it's an iPad that lays on, on the horizontal and there's a mirror here. Um, and you control, I can control it with my iPhone. So I can control the speed or the, the person that's doing the course can control, can have the, an iPhone and control the speed that the, the script is rolling. Super cool. It has worked great. Uh, it's really stopped all the uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. And, and what I love is that, you know, like you said, you don't have to spend a fortune. You do good professional work and you, you know, you're coming out with great results. So that's always, that's always fun to see. And it's, it, I like debunking the myth that you have to go. People ask me all the time, how much do you have to spend to do this? I go, not as much as you think. And because they, they put obstacles in front of themselves, and you really don't have to. And uh, so this is good. This is, a, this is a good lesson for everybody that you can do all sorts of stuff with, with whatever you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the instructors from Denver, uh, who he's a, an instructor that travels around, uh, around the globe, actually, teaching. And he wants to stop traveling so much. So he, for the first time, he decided to you know, figure out how to do the production. Uh, he actually cut up his wife's pantyhose and created a buffer for his microphone. <laughs> so <laughs> some people come up with amazing things. Another instructor created, uh, he used uh, his iPhone as a teleprompter. Mm -hmm. He duct taped it on top of the camera. <laughs> the funniest thing is that these people send me pictures of what they're doing. I love it. It's, it's <laughs> great. That's wonderful. I mean... I think also it helps with the, the editing process, too. You don't really have to go through and edit as much. And, and you can plan and kind of, I think, I guess it's all in planning, really. That is right. Yeah, it, it cuts out on, on the retakes and uh, the huns and, uh, mm, oh, I forgot this, I forgot that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, the, <laughs> the other thing, too, like my experience is in, in doing little e-snippets and, and things I did them mainly on English composition, and there was a project I was involved in several years ago. It was with uh, Florida State, and we were trying to do some things on what was called a pepper pad. And that was like a, an early tablet that didn't really quite take off. So, but, but they were it was for a deployed military, and they all got a like, pepper pad, and we did videos because at that point. Uh, not everybody had connectivity, so but they wanted to be able to do their courses in the field. So I did a lot of little video snippets, and and, and they were pretty fun because I knew the topic, and, and I found them to be easy to do, especially if I kept it under like a minute and a half, and and also if I went out in the wild and I didn't do it just in this like sitting in front of my um, my my can my um, computer. Do you do things yeah. out in the field? Uh, we, let's see, I did go to College Station one time uh, to do one of the courses. But, uh, yeah, I, I would love to go. Uh, part of my passion was, uh, you know, it started when I was going offshore and seeing all this amazing work. You really get to see uh, 
the technology coming together and talking to folks on the field. I'd love to to film some courses out there. Um, so so far uh, we don't have a course like that, but I hope we we'll do that shortly. There's a captain of a ship that uh, is is working on his courses, and uh, I think he's taking some some takes out there while he's he's out in the Gulf. So we'll see. Well, I think you know right now there's a lot of interest in in yes being out in the field and doing kind of not just at demos of, of equipment but also like a, in geology and the outcrops and I know a couple of projects where there's like this digital outcrop issue so that like somebody can go out a professor and then do a little video of the actual outcrop and then talk about what's going on so I tried that last week <laughs> I was in Denver so I went I was actually in Golden so I went to Morrison to the uh, there's an outcrop Jurassic formation and there are dinosaur prints and there's this one area there's like a supposed dinosaur egg so, so I took videos ah. with my, my little I, iPhone and <laughs> I uploaded them onto YouTube and I also found this thing called ThingLink where I, I took a still shot of the dinosaur picture the dinosaur um, prints or footprints and then I put little hot links, and then I put, you could click on it, and it has a little player, so I had, like, embedded me, like, and you could see me talking and gesticulating wildly to this, like, you know, dinosaur, <laughs> potentially egg or probably a concretion. But what is it, you know? <laughs> and it was really fun. And then you could also link to um, articles. So I linked to some articles, linked to some images. And I mean, so you can do so much with the little video snippets and it doesn't have to be just like, like straight hour long or chunked up hour. You know, I, I discovered a website yesterday called Canva, canva.com. Yes, have you heard yeah. of Canva? Yeah, I think I, I sent it to you too. It's, it's a cool website that allows you to, especially in what you're doing, you want to get the information out to Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and everywhere else. And they have templates pre-designed specifically for creating social media graphics. That's and it so looked cool. really uh, yes. cool. It's very easy to create graphics. It'll always fit in exactly the right spot because they all have, you know, kind of rules and requirements of how big or how small things should be. Canva, www.canva, V as in Victor, A.com. I just thought that was a cool website. Oh, I, I was so appreciated you sending me that, sending me that, Rick, because I used it, but I didn't use it for social media. I used it for creating an infographic. Oh, which but you could do too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it was so much fun. It didn't take me much time at all. I did like geology teams up with engineers and just things you needed to know the the knowledge base of what we need to know from each other. And it's like I thought perfect tool for working memory, mnemonic, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Now, Braulio, just before we we finish up today, what are some of the future things you see coming up with with Petro Lessons as well as the industry in terms of? training how how do you see getting the message out of training people what, what's next uh, well there's a lot on the roadmap uh, what you see now on the site is really the tip of the iceberg we have a lot of features I I've been talking a lot with companies and, and with professionals that want to share their knowledge so uh, you know we're bringing gamification and we'll bring in a lot of uh, social network interaction among students um, being a niche, we'll be able to build career paths uh, okay. for for those folks. Uh, and, and the industry, as you mentioned, you know, there there's so many tools out there today. Uh, it, it's quite amazing what can be done and, and to help to accelerate this knowledge download and and the mm -hmm. digestion of it, right? Because if you only download the knowledge and you don't have the right tool to distribute it, it does no good. Uh, so uh, the beauty of it is that you, you're coming up with, you know, you're having now the, the tools to download and to facilitate that, to create the message, as well as uh, platforms and tools to distribute that. So uh, I think it, it, it is just, uh, you know, the whole idea of the MOOCs and uh, the videos, uh, it, it's, it's changing how, how learning is done. And uh, I think the industry is even, even something like oil and gas that's very risk averse uh, will adopt it. And, um, and, and it's really changing how, how knowledge is transferred from one person to another. I think it's amazing. 
That's great. Well, you know, it's been a pleasure meeting you today. I know you and Susan know each other, but yes. I'm, I'm glad I could meet you. And um, we'd love to have you back on another time and tell us more about what you're doing and sharing even stuff you do. You know, tell us a little bit more about kind of your workflows and all that, because people like to hear things like that. Before we wrap up, though, you know, we call the show Life Edge because we always talk about the, the edges you get, the things that gave you an edge in life. What, what do you think made you successful in life? Oh, that's a difficult question. Um, what made me successful? Um, well, I think um, I've never been handed things very easily. Uh, I've always uh, either had to run after things that I wanted, uh, or or I, I just I, I know I'm I'm a risk taker. I, I actually enjoy change, and I seek those. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, a merge of not being handed out anything too easily and the you know I, I enjoy that steep curve uh, kind of helped me appreciate everything that I conquer and not take anything for granted so I, I guess um, that that's something I carry with me uh, when people say that I have a very difficult mission ahead of me I'm like that's great that's what I want I I don't want it something that's easy and that's not going to have a potential to change the world and change how people think and do things. So That's great. Oh, that's totally great. That's, that's a good way to end the show. Very inspiring. Well, Bradley, again, a pleasure. Uh, and where can people reach you if they want to get a hold of you? Yeah, just uh, shoot me an email, braulio at petrolessons.com. Visit the site, www.petrolessons.com. Uh, reach out if you want to teach, if you want to participate in any way. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, I love being here. Thank you so much for for uh, inviting me. Oh, our pleasure. Oh, if, thank you, Braulio. If you're watching the show on YouTube, please subscribe. Press that little hands up button. We don't really know what it does, but it, it just seems good. So we like, uh, we like doing the shows, and we hope you enjoy them. Leave us your feedback. We always like to hear from you. And get in touch with Braulio if you have any questions or want more information. We will see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Susan.